First Chronicles chapter 14. Now Hiram, king of Tyre, Tyre is a nation on the uh, sea coast of the northeast, no, north, south, northwest, northwest on the Mediterranean Sea. King of Tyre sent messages to David, and in 1 Kings 5, he helped Solomon for the temple. And timbers of cedar with masons, carpenters, to build him a house. Now let's run over to 2 Samuel 5. We'll pick this up again. 2 Samuel chapter 5. We'll compare these two passages together. And we want 2 Samuel chapter 5. 11. And Hiram, that's the first time he shows up there. King of Tyre sent messengers to David and cedar trees and carpenters. That's the first time that word shows up. Masons, that's the first time that word shows up. And they built David an house. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel. That he exalted his kingdom for all his people's Israel. Now you can't say that about the church age. Because if you say that today, look at these mega churches. Billion dollars worth of building and gizmos and gadgets and crystal pulpits and nonsense. God has not established that. Not today. Because if you were to take this thing with David, then what would you say about the Apostle Paul, which is the greatest Christian we know? And I know we're putting him up on a, on a altar, on a ladder, but look how great he was. He said of himself, he, for his, any man that he came across, he did not waste time, but gave him the gospel of Jesus Christ. That guy was in prison. That guy fasted. That guy was time without food. He was time without water. He was in a couple shipwrecks. He had been bruised. He'd been beaten. He'd been stoned. He'd been rejected. It's even Christians rejected him. That's a fr far fry call of the mega complex great authority how great television evangelism is. And yet that's not good and yet the work of Paul. There are people out there who, who are Bible believe and saved Christians. They do what the Bible says and churches hate them. So when you read at this prosperity, look at David. This guy, he sends him food, he sends him workers, builds him a house. That goes today. No, it doesn't. All the disciples, apostles of Jesus Christ suffered a violent death. Fox's Book of Mars speaks about not, not the riches of David, but dying on, on, on faggots, dying, being drowned, you know, all kinds of torture. We're in two dispensations here, and we ought not to be ashamed. And David took him more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem. After he was come from Hebron, there were yet sons and daughters born to David. So now he's established in Jerusalem. These be the names of those that were born unto him in Jerusalem. Shema, Shobad, Nathan, and Solomon. And those names we don't need to look at. But verse 17, we'll pick up where... But when the Philistines heard that they anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came to seek David, and David heard of it, and went down to the hold. And the Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Riptha. David cried the Lord, look at that. God, what am I going to do? Saying, I shall go up to the Philistines. Now he questions God, God, what am I going to do? Is this what I do? Will thou deliver them in my hand? And the Lord said unto David, go up, for I will doubtless... Deliver the Philistines in thy hand. David came to Barathurim. David smoked them there and said, The Lord has broken forth upon my enemies before me. Look at it. David gives God the credit. As a breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of the place Baal Perzim. And there they left their images and David and his men burned them. We'll pick this up in First Chronicles. The Philistines came up again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephim. And when David cried the Lord again, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but shalt fetch a compass behind him, encircle him. 
and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. That's the first place mulberry shows up in the Bible. And let it be, when thou hearest the sound of the going the tops of the mulberry trees, and that thou shalt bestir, that's the only time that word shows up, bestir thyself, for them shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistine. And David did so, and the Lord had commanded him and smote the Philistine from Geba unto thou come to Gazer. All right, back to First Chronicles 14, which goes along parallel to First Chronicles 14, both of these passages. Verse 1, Now Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David, and timbers of cedar, that's a very fragrant, wonderful wood, with masons and carpenters to build. And Second Samuel says they built him a house. So Chronicle says the object of the force that to do was to build David a house. Samuel says they built that house. So Chronicles records, all right, this is what our thought is. This is our idea. Samuel records the aftermath. And David perceived that the Lord had confirmed Second Samuel said, established him king over Israel. And his kingdom was lifted up on high. Now you would think, this is pride, and usually is pride in the Bible, but David has no pride here. And Second Samuel said, exalted. It is God that lifted up Israel. It is God that lifted up David. Not the people, and not David himself. There was no sin here. Because of the people of Israel. So David and the people worshipped God rightly. And did what they were supposed to do. And David took more wives at Jerusalem. You remember Chronicles? I mean, Samuel said? Did it say concubines? Chronicles says just wives. Wives are concubines. That's all they are. And David begat more sons and daughters. Now, and here comes the list of names. Again, we, we studied this. We looked at this. Now the names of his children, which he had in Jerusalem, particularly in Jerusalem, Shammah, Shobad, Nathan, and Solomon. Nathan is that prophet. Nathan was such a man in David's life, he named one of his sons after Nathan. And we, discussed, we, did, we did that when we did 2 Samuel 5, studied those names. And Abihar, Ishua, and Eliphaz, that. And Naga, and Nafpeg, and Jephi, Nishma, and Belida, and Eliphaz. And when the Philistines heard, okay, here's the battle. When the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David. And David heard of it and went out against them. Now, there's a problem I have with the Bible right there. One problem I have. It says all the Philistines. I mean, every little single cent Philistine. Every single Philistine. Because they will say all means all, that all means all. And I've heard that in the church where they, King James, and they pervert the Bible, change the word of God in front of you, and they don't notice. And when I had this, uh, uh, a preacher in California, all means all, and all means all in one of the slaves. I said, so when in Daniel, when the men that went against da Daniel and the king threw them in the lion's bone and it said that the lions had mastery and uh, break or something, all their bones. I mean, you mean the anvil, the hammer and that, the stirrup? And he never wrote ever back to me again. I guess all does not mean all to be all, all in the Bible. It sounds cute. It sounds wonderful. But if it is all the Philistines, that means every single Philistine from that was just born to that is ready for the grave. Audrey, Adrian can't walk and is bed proud. And those that are sick and all that are in the battlefield. I don't think so. It sounds cute. It sounds wonderful. But not all times does the word all mean all. You gotta watch your doctrines that you teach. All the Philistines went up to seek David, and David heard of it and went out against them. Some people just turned me off because of that. 
I don't care. And the Philistines came to spread themselves in the valley of refuge. What, what a way to describe spread themselves. You know, you have to take like butter and you put it on bread. It just go everywhere and everywhere. And what the idea is, they're just filling the land side. Every nook and cranny. They're in the mountains. They're in the hills. They're in the, the, this hole. They're in this cave. They're behind this rock. They're in, behind this bush. They're in this tree. They're just everywhere. Spread themselves in the valley of refuge. And David choir to God. Said over in 2 Samuel, the Lord. So the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, scripture with scripture is God. And you run that scripture when you see the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, guess who Jesus is? God. Saying, I go up against the Philistines. Shall I go up, God? Question God. Shall we do it? Remember in the book of Judges when Benjamin sinned and they go up to God. Well, God, we're going to go do it. We're going to go kill him. God, okay, go ahead. You got it in your mind. And David's not demanding God. He's like, shall I go up? I mean, if you tell me no, okay, we won't. You must have something better to do. And will thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to him, Go up, for I will deliver them in thy hand. Now remember, 2 Samuel 5 said, Doubtless. <laughs> you imagine that word when, when David hears doubtless? <laughs> All right, let's go. Gideon said, Lord, uh, can I bring this thing out with water? And when I can pull this thing up, could it be water just on the ground? Uh, can I have a few more others? Can I have a can I have the enemy tell a dream? And interpret the dream for me. And God's like, doubtless, go. And even David had his fears in his men. So they came up to Baal Perizim, and David smote them there. And then David said, God has broken in upon my enemies by my hand. Look at it. Credit goes to God. Like the breaking forth, that's important, of the waters. Second Samuel said, Breach. Therefore, they called the name of the place Baal Perism. Now, Baal, there's that God, the God of all gods. There is the God of the harvest. And I think with a fruitful plain, fruitful valley, purple mountain, something like that. He used, <coughs> he used <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. He said, David, you're a bad man for naming that city after Baal. It's, it's named Baal. Perism. Perism means, see that breaking forth? It's a breaking forth against Baal. <laughs> Look at that. And God did it. Now go back to chapter 13, verse 11, real quick. And David was displeased because of the Lord. David is upset with the Lord. Had made a breach upon Uzzah. Wherefore the place is called Peruzza. A breach upon Uzzah that day. Well, look at David's attitude now. Baal Perezim. Notice this, it's almost the same spelling outside. There's a A Z instead of an E Z. It both means breaking forth, both mean a breach. Oh, God, you breached upon us. Oh, what did you do that for? Here's the enemy of God. Here's the enemy of David. Here's the enemy of Israel. God gives them the victory. God, you breached that God, Dagon, and all the gods of the Philistines. David's changed. In the next chapter, we're going to bring that ark in correctly, rightfully. What a change. And I think chapter 13, you see, David, you're mad at God. You are doing it wrong. Chapter 14, glory to God in the highest. And chapter 15, let's get things right. So there, the name Baal is like, God, you broke him. You, you breached him. And then another place he's got in his life is Perez Uzzah. And when they had left their gods there, David gave a commandment. In 2 Samuel 5, it says images. 
Remember Rachel stole her father's images. And he goes, he stole my God. <laughs> and then when Jacob heads back to Bethel, he's like, all right, let's gather all these gods up. Come on. Now he buried them. David and Moses put the gods to fire. Look at it says, David commanded that they were burned with fire. David put the images of gods, he put them into hell. He said, get rid of them things. Look at that. You know what Americans would have done? They'd pick them up and sell them on eBay. They'd go down to the pawn store. They would pick them up and start worshiping them, as you would see men in the Bible will do. And the Philistines yet spread themselves abroad in the valley. Again, how do they get the point they're not going to win against Israel? Only once when King Saul was, was wrong and disobedient to God. And they only wanted to get rid of Saul and his men. Therefore David acquired a God. Now look at that. He's already won one battle with the Philistines. He's burnt their God. David's like, God, yes, they're back. Do we do this again? What do we do? David inquired of God. And God said to him, go not after them. Turn away from them. Come and come upon them over against the mulberry tree. So I think there's a, there's a little song about mulberry trees or something. So he says, no, you're not going about, and this is something weird. I don't know. I can't explain what's going to happen. But he says, come around over by those mulberry trees. And it shall be when thou shalt hear a sound of going in the tops of the mulberry trees. What on earth is that? I have no idea. It's a, US, it's a USO. Unidentified sound object. He comes up to these mulberry trees and he's listening for a sound in the top of those trees. That then, when you hear that sound in the top of the tree, when, then thou shalt go out to battle. For God has gone forth before thee to smite the host of the village. So David comes up. Come on, king, give the order. Well... <laughs> All right, now let's attack. What was that? That's attack. That's what that was. Little green men? No, it doesn't say any flying object. Don't misrepresent this thing as a UFO. It's not a UFO. It's a sound. It could have been an owl. It could have been a bird. It could have been a twig snap. It doesn't say. There are things in the Bible. Okay, what does it say? It says, hear a sound of going tops of the mulberry tree. And I bet you there's scholars out there and there's people from Sinanary and all that and great men of the pulpit. The sound in the original Greek and the Hebrew forces say that that sound was a hoot owl. We don't know what that is. There are things in the Bible we don't know. And when we get to glory, we run up to David and say, David, hold, stop. Yes, King David, yes, good. What was that sound? And maybe then we'll get the answer. David had to list for a sound. And when we learn about Elijah coming up again, the earth quaked, the fire roared, the wind broke. But it was that still little voice. Now, I'm not saying this was a voice here, but it's still a little voice. It's a little thing. It may say charge. I don't know. And David therefore did as God commanded him. And they smoked the host of the Philistines from Gibeon, even to Gezer. The fame of David, look at that fame, went out of all lands, and the Lord brought the fear of him upon all nations. Okay, David kicked Philistine butt twice. It was recorded the first time God, their God did that. And then this weird thing with the mulberry tree. And he beat him again. Don't mess with david if you do his god will get you that's what the that's what went around remember rahab when they come across the, the jordan river the spies they said we've heard what god's done to you in egypt we heard how god has has 
has uh, uh, parted the waters for you. We've heard the majesty, wonderful of your God. We have shut this entire city up because we fear you. That's the same thing that's happened here with David. It happened with Joshua, the fear, and it happened with David, the fear. Joshua, a type of Jesus Christ, Jehovah saves, that brings the Jew in the land, and David, who is reigning in Jerusalem. And the nations say, don't mess with David. Now, they're not saying that today. They're not saying don't mess with Israel. Don't mess with Israel. But when Jesus Christ sits on the throne of David, don't you mess with him. Or anything to deal with him. 